again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today we have got ourselves another pattern by David Browning. Mm -hmm. And this one is the Lacy C to C Triangle Shawl. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with C to C, it is corner to corner. Yes, the shawl starts at the bottom tip and you work your way up in a very easy one row repeat. It's fabulous. It's light. It's lacy. It's very, very simple. And I had a lot of fun doing this project. Yes. And for this project, I used, not sponsored, I used Karen Skinny Cakes. And this is the colorway of Melon Smoothie. Mm -hmm. Now it is a light weight of three. However, I used a hook size larger than is recommended. They say to use a size G or a four millimeter hook. Me, on the other hand, to get this nice and lacy, I used a size J, a six millimeter. So I would say whatever the the yarn you know recommends the hook size just bump it up a couple you know you want this to be nice and flowy and drapey and it certainly is and i used the entire cake and it is about 795 yards and my finished shawl came out to be about 35 inches high by 78 inches wide so it is substantial and uh, yeah i had a lot of fun making this now also typically i'm really not a fan of picos however the pico edge i absolutely love it i really do i give credit where credit is due i think David may have made me into a Pico convert. I don't know, but it was actually very easy. And I think I may be using the Picos more in the future. I don't know. You tell me. So also, if of course you are interested in showing your support, and if you're interested in getting this pattern, links and info will be in the description box down below. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first things first with row one. Now the rows are going to go flying by, uh, at least initially. So again, I'm using a size J six millimeter hook, and I'm using a weight of three yarn. Now this is Lion Brand's ice cream in the colorway of black cherry, if I'm not mistaken. So it is comparable to the skinny cakes. So we're going to start with a slip knot and a chaining of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then into that first chain, I'm going to do a double crochet. And then you can sort of cinch up your slip knot. And yes, folks, that is the end of row one. So row two, we're going to scoot right along. Row two, start by chaining up five. One, two, three, four, five. And then again, into the first chain that we did, double crochet. Turn your work, okay? Then into this chain space that we hit, this, this loop that we made, slip stitch. So slip stitch right into the loop. And then chain up four. One, two, three, four. And double crochet into the same space. Okay, and that is the first two rows. Now let's do row three. Okay, so for row three, I'm gonna start it just like we did 
row two. So again, chain up five. One, two, three, four, five. Then double crochet into that first chain. Turn your work into this chain space, slip stitch. Chain up four, one, two, three, four. Double crochet into the same space. Slip stitch into the next loop that we have at the end here. So slip stitch into there. Chain up four, one, two, three, four and double crochet into that same space, that same loop right there. And there you go. That's the first three rows right out of the gate. And basically, you're just going to keep repeating the same row over and over. Let's do a couple more rows together, shall we? All righty. Okay, row four. What I really like about this piece is that it's one of those projects where you can totally lose yourself in the process. So again, I've got to start by chaining up five. One, two, three, four, five. Double crochet into the first chain. Turn the work. Slip stitch into the first chain space. Chain up four. One, two, three, four. Double crochet into the same space. And then slip stitch into the next chain space. Chain up four. Double crochet into the same space. Slip stitch into the next space, that last one. Slip stitch. Chain up four. And double crochet into the same space. Now, when you're doing your slip stitches, you may by accident make a single crochet. I found myself doing that and then because I'm a bit of a purist, I frogged out my stitches. Um, but is it going to make a, you know, tremendous difference? No, but, you know, it is something to be aware of. So, you know what, let's do another row. Let's do row five together. Because I like to be thorough and spend time with you guys. So, let's start by chaining up five. One, two, three, four five, double crochet into the first chain, turn the work, slip stitch into that first chain space, chain up four, double crochet into the same space, slip stitch into the next space, chain up four, double crochet into the same space, slip stitch into the next space, chain up four, double crochet into the same space, slip stitch into the next space, chain up four, and double crochet into the same space. So you can see it works up pretty quickly. Now I'm using, you know, a, a variegated yarn. I think also this would look really nice if using an ombre. It would look really, really nice. You know, unless, you know, if you use a, a solid yarn, um, you will end up 
with stripes. If you're using any kind of color changing yarn, yes, you will end up with horizontal stripes. I'm okay with that. Um, so then let's do one more row six and you're just repeating the same one row repeat, but I like stitching. What can I say? Chain up five, one, two, three, four, five, and then double crochet into that first chain. Turn the work, slip stitch into that first chain space. And after this row, I'm going to show you how to do the edging once your piece is big enough to your liking. So we did our slip stitch, chain up four. Double crochet into the same space. Slip stitch into the next space. Chain up four. Double crochet in the same space. Slip stitch in the next space. Chain up four. Double crochet in the same space. Oops. Uh oh, hang on. I'm trying to catch it. <laughs> okay, so I got my chaining up a four. Double crochet into the same space. Slip stitch into the next space. Chain up four. Double crochet in the same space. Slip stitch into the next space. Chain up four and double crochet into the same space. This is a great project to work on while watching a movie because yes, you can go on autopilot and still end up with a really lovely, lovely piece. Okay, so now, now I'm gonna show you how to do that really awesome Pico edging and let's get to it. All right, so when your shawl is big enough, and you want to do the edging, start by chaining up one, turn the work, and we're going to be working into these chain spaces. So to start off with, I'm going to do a single crochet into that space, another single crochet, and then a third single crochet. Now to make the pico, chain up three and then working into the the side of your single crochet into the side here now this this was something new for me because i always thought you were supposed to go into that top chain but going into the side of that single crochet really, I think, made it easier for me. So in the side of that single crochet, do a slip stitch. And then into that same space, do two more single crochets. Got a little Pico, it's so cute. And it looks a lot better than the picos that I had attempted to do previously in a former life. So basically it's two singles, then another single, chain three, slip stitch, two singles. So let's, let's do the rest of this edge here. So in essence, it's three singles. So into this next space, we're just scooping from one space to the other space. So three single crochets, one, two, three, chain three, slip stitch into the side of the single crochet, and then two more singles in that same space. Into the next chain space, three single crochets, one, two, three, chain three, slip stitch into the side of 
the single crochet. There we go. And then two more single crochets into the chain space. Into the next chain space, three single crochets. Chain three. Slip stitch into the side of the single. Two more singles in the same space. Three singles in the next space. Chain three. Slip stitch into the side of the single. Two more singles in the same space. Okay, and we're at the last one. So three singles, one, two, three, chain up three, slip stitch into the side of the single, two more singles, and there you go. And then you can cut your yarn, sew in your ends, and you have a thing of beauty. I love this. It's simple, it's very seasonally appropriate, and it is so darn quick. Mm, love it. So, like I said, you know, if you guys, you know, want to share support, go check out the links in the description box down below if you want to buy the pattern. There's also a ton of other info and links and sort of good stuff. So go, go support David. Yes. And if you want to help support me, hit that thumbs up button. Mm -hmm. You know, if you like the video, it does help. Thank you. Leave your comments and let me know what you think of this piece. I really, really like it because it's a variation on something that we know and love, the C to C, but it also makes me think of the trellis stitch, but it's a nice, you know, variation of the two sort of melded together. Good work, David. So that being said, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe, you know, and because there's always more stuff to come, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations, or you never know what I might come up with. And until next time, you know what to do. Stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a good day.